So, welcome back to uh, an evening with the Barbarian here. Uh, today, I'll be looking at enemy behavior. And I wanted to look at the original game and see exactly what it feels like, what it looks like. So I have that firmly and freshly in my mind uh, as I'm trying to emulate that. For enemy behavior, we'll be looking at three components. The enemy uh, has three different behaviors that sort of mix together. The first thing is he follows me. He tries to get close to me. But then you'll notice that, um, that he doesn't get too close. Tries to get just to the side of me, and that depends on which side he's on. So if I actually I get too close, He'll back off, and if I cross him, he'll assume that position. The other thing that they do is that little figure eight pattern. Uh, little figure eight pattern right there. They've got that. And then the last thing that they do uh, is they try to stay separated from each other. So let me move on to the next wave, get several enemies, and we'll see how they separate. So they sort of bunch up. They're all trying to get to that same general location on the one side or the other. But they keep separated a certain amount. Uh, last night, I already ported over the bulk of the related code um, and today I just want to now I'm just going to take a look and see about how closely we seem to have emulated it maybe they have just a little bit too much repulsive force okay and we'll come back to that what I want to do real quick is I want to show um, I want to show what I've ported over last night and uh, where we're at and what some of the features are of this. The original code was a basic hierarchy, inheritance hierarchy. Uh, and as I'm porting it over, I'm introducing some component elements that were not there in the original um, simply because I'm moving to a more Unity style of uh, framework. However, as I'm just porting this code, I am just porting the hierarchy portions of this. So we'll start off with the fact that the player is a bird. There's a base class for all birds. The player is a bird. And also the enemy, the basic enemy, is an enemy bird, which is a bird. And so I just ported all of this over. What you see here is these are essentially the, you know, the tweaker terms. These are all of the various speeds and distances that tune the enemy behavior. And this is all just ported over from the original, where in the original, I literally, as you can see here, just typed constants directly into the C-sharp code. Um, that means they cannot really be tuned in real time. Um, but maybe we want to tune them in real time. Now, if you want a designer to a designer friendly framework for this, you're going to want to put those into something that you can edit in the editor. Um, but I'm not a designer, I'm a programmer, so I'm completely comfortable working here in the text editor. But I would like to tune these in real time and watch the response and, and iterate. Instant iteration would be a good thing. And so the quickest, easiest way to do that is let me suggest the things I want to tweak um, are this repulse force and the max push. So I'm going to make them, instead of const, I'm going to make them static. Now, that's going to allow me to edit them 
here in the debugger. I can't edit them. I still cannot really, come on you. I still cannot really edit them directly. in Unity, but I can edit them here. And I was thinking I want just a little bit less. Let's crank down the repulsive force. I'm happy with that, I think. I want them to spread out a little bit just so they don't pile on top of each other completely. But clumping a little is kind of nice, right? Maybe a little bit more push, a little bit more push. They look too evenly spread out to me right now. So let's compromise. See if we can get them to sort of clump a little bit more. Okay, I think I like that. So we're going to make these numbers the official numbers 0.5 and 0 0.75. 0 0.5 is what we had. Let's take this to 0 0.75, and now I can make these const again so no one will change them. All right, so that's just an example of how to use the debugger to do instant tuning as opposed to relying on game objects or scripted objects or something. Uh, for a more designer-friendly thing, we'll want a scripted object that is loaded in somewhere and managed somewhere um, so that it can be tuned you know, here. The reason I don't just put it directly on the enemy is, as you can see, I've got 10 instances of the enemy, and I don't want to tune all 10 of them simultaneously. Um, that wouldn't really solve the iteration problem. Okay, so that's that. Uh, I did want to take a moment to highlight how the enemy works. Um, let's take a look at that. The Actually, I've got a single enemy in isolation. Uh, so we can see what it does. It has this figure eight sort of pattern that it does, and it oscillates around a point to one side or the other of the player. All right, and how do we make that happen? The enemy behavior can be broken down into three components, and it's and the three components are try to approach the player to one side or the other, um, do the figure eight pattern, and repel each other, spread out from each other. And those three components are not part of the enemy state machine. You might think, you know, that's you know, classic state machine behavior, and we have a state machine in here, but those things are not part of the state machine. Instead, they are combined in what I describe as sort of a fuzzy logic approach. Meaning I have three things, I, three goals I want the enemy to do. One, I want them to approach a point near the player. Two, I want them to do that figure eight pattern. And three, I want them to repel each other. And so they don't, they don't make a logical decision about which one of these things to do at any given moment. They do all three things and they just combine to get a result. Creates a very natural, um, overall combination very organic behavior. So let's look at this real quick and we can see where this is taking place. So right here we are getting the player and based on which side of the player you're on they automatically turn to face the player. That's there and they'll offset their goal location. The goal location is described by this delta variable. They'll offset it to be a little bit on the side that they're on, so they don't try to go straight to the player. In here, we'll see uh, this is the 
figure eight pattern. Um, in fact, let's just turn vector three, zero. We'll turn that off and see just the one behavior running, which is approach the player. So approaching the player from the side you're on towards trying to keep a certain distance from the player. So if you get too close, they back up. Get too far, they approach. Go up, they chase you all over. If you switch sides, they'll switch sides. Right, very straightforward, very clear. Um, but this is just not organic, right? It looks very static, very still. And so I in inject this figure eight pattern on there and you can see where that just goes in to their goal position. I just add it to the goal position. It's a great little offset. So the target they're trying to get to is a figure eight off of where the player is. All right, and so that's that pattern. And then the last thing that we do is let's bring back my 10 enemies is the repulsion. The repulsion is kind of interesting. Uh, so they're doing their figure eight. They're all attracted towards a position on one side or the other of the player, but they're also repelled from each other. And this creates this sort of semi-chaotic behavior. And how does that work? Um, now they could, right here in their update, they could find all the nearby enemies and, uh, you know, and, and create a repulsion from each one. But that would be um, somewhat inefficient. As a more efficient process, what I've done is I've made a complete list of all the enemies, and that way I can just go through that list one time. Um, it is, of course, n squared, but at least I can do half n squared. I can go through the list and have each bird find its distance from every other bird, and then when you go to the next bird in the list, you know that you've already covered the first two birds, right? So you only have to check every bird after you in the list. And so we'll just accumulate, um, accumulate a repulsive force between the two birds. So we take two birds, whatever their distance is, and that'll create a repulsive force up to push them apart. Uh, and that's, that's right there. Um, and I'm leveraging this list, which makes this function a static function. And I had to call that from somewhere. And I threw that into my game manager. I just have the game manager make that call once per frame. So I have this static list that's going to come in handy for the pushing and it may be useful in other areas as well. So how do I maintain that list? I'm just going to maintain it by using the on enable on disable functions that are you know built in for Unity. So every time an enemy is enabled, will add himself to the list, and every time they are disabled, <coughs> they will remove themselves from the list. Right now, when an enemy is hit by a bullet, they just call destroy, and that will effectively call the on disable as part of that. But down the road, enemies are going into a static pool, and the on disable will still work in that case.